God bless y'all. I wanted to share this with you. Yo, so a couple weeks ago, I was in bed, sleeping, and I had a quick dream. I was still in my bed in the dream. And then my wife said to me, Satan's coming for you. And I was like, what? And she says, he's gonna snatch you right out of your bed. And I got scared in the dream. I was like, oh, snap. I tucked my feet in under the covers. I was like, I don't want nobody snatching. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'd be in your bed and somebody snatch you right out of your right out of your bed. Like you, everyone would be shook. So I got scared, and then my bed, my platform where my bed is, it's not high off the floor because we got a low a low platform for the bed. And as I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? And then I, something like pushed me off the bed, like to get me up. And so I, I stood up and I was like, you know what? I'm not waiting for him to come get me. I'm going to meet him where he's at. So I got up and I started walking through my house looking for him. I said, because if, <clears throat> excuse me, I said, if he's coming for me, then that ain't going to happen. I says, I'm going to meet him where he's at. So as I'm looking for him, all of a sudden the sun, the sun, like it was almost like, you know how morning time is where the sun really starts to just peek over and it starts to get bright. It starts to illuminate the house. And so that's what it was doing. It was starting to illuminate. And I got into my kitchen and, and then I ended up waking up. And when I woke up, it was weird because I was in the same position. I was in the same position that I was like prior to, like after I went into the kitchen, I walked back and then I laid back in the bed. And then once I laid back, I was in that same position back in my, in my room. So fast forward to last night when my wife, and this just clicked with me. When my wife says Satan's coming for me, he was coming for me. So last night I had an encounter. I had an encounter with Satan and he offered me everything. He offered me everything. When I tell you he offered me everything, he offered me everything that you can possibly want. Everything that you could desire. Everything he offered me. Everything. And I'm going to tell you how this started. In this dream, it was it was so real. When I tell you it was real, it was realer than what, what this is right now. You're like, yo, how? Because we live in, you know, the physical. No, this was real because it was spiritual. So I'm in this room. And I notice all the people around me. My wife's there. My father's there. Friends are there from like me, high school, cousins, brother-in-laws. Everyone's there. And the setting was like, it was almost like a chill setting where, you know, you're familiar with everybody. Because I was like, Satan, he's smart. He tries to get you comfortable. He'll put you in a position where you're comfortable, where you know everybody around you. And where you, you lax, where you, you're not worrying about nothing. And so that's the setting that I was at. But I'm observing everything around me because I ain't stupid. And I'm like, okay. I'm looking. I see my wife's cousin. She's there talking with a guy. And then he leaves. And then she lays on my wife's lap. And she's like, guys suck. I can't stand guys. I'm like, is everything all right? She's like, I, I just need a hug. So I give her a hug. And Satan always tries to throw that little twist in there. Throw that little twist to see if you'll bite the bait. And so he tried using my wife's cousin in the dream to, like, for lust. I was like, nope. Shut it down right there. Nope. Nope. So I, as I was pushed in another room... I went back to the same room that everybody was in. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get into too much detail about what was trying to happen, but shut that down right quick. Mm -mm. So as I get into the room, people are everywhere. I see this. It looked like a, uh, a piano, but it was a miniature piano and it was on the table. I'm talking to other people and I see this piano at the corner of my eye. So I sit down and I start playing with the piano. And then somebody comes in the room, somebody like who I went to school with. And he says this, hey, Jared, take this number down. So I'm like, okay. So I start writing the phone. I take out my phone. I start typing in the number. And the number's not going in. Every time he tells me a number, I know the number, but I'm pressing it, and it's pressing another number. So he says, you got that? And I was like, yeah, I got that. And another one of my boys who, who I went to school was in back of me. He's trying to tell me the numbers, and I'm trying to type it. I'm like, yeah, okay. So the first kid leaves which is David, he leaves. And then my boy Natrell, he was in the back and he's just like, 
You know what you should do? He said, just record a message basically stating that, just say that you're, uh, you're a beat maker. You're a beat maker for Timbaland, because you know, everyone knows who Timbaland is. Timbaland made, like, you know, he, he does music. See, so, so he's saying for me to lie and say that I'm this person who makes these beats because I love music and that's what happened. The piano intrigued me. It got me, it got me like focused on that and I was, I was making like a melody on it. And then he walked in, they Charles trying to tell me, oh, just record this. I know that it's not the people. It's not the people who are really in the dream. Those aren't my friends. Those were demons. Those were spirits behind the whole dream trying to get me comfortable, trying to get me to do things that I wasn't supposed to because we need to be observant. We need to be careful what we do in dreams because it is the spiritual realm. It's the spiritual realm. When you dream, you are dreaming. You're in the spiritual realm. It's realer than what this is around us so i'm gonna continue now check this out so he says for me to record a message i says oh okay and then he walks out the room and i'm saying to myself i'm not recording no message for nobody the second i said that david walks back in he says he wants to meet with you he wants to meet with me come on he wants to meet with you i says who he said just come he wants to meet with you so i says okay so i go down the hallway I go in this room, there's a big TV that's there. And I see this man standing on the TV and there's a, a, a round circle with a light going. Boom, 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 boom. And this is in the TV, it's a circle, it, which is weird. And the man, I can't see the man, he's not facing towards me. I can see his shadow, he's facing the opposite way. My father, my, my earthly father, Kenneth, he's, he's on the side. David is on the other side, a friend that I used to have in high school. Natrell is in the back of me on the, the, the left-hand side, like facing my back. Biggie, another one of my, my friends, was on the other side. And then some random guy was just there. They shut the door, locked the door. All of a sudden, the TV starts flashing. And the man on the TV is saying, look at the light. 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 And I'm looking at the light and then I'm turning my head. And all of a sudden it looked like little rings on the bottom. They were gold rings. And they were things that I was being offered. Nothing was spoken of the things, but I can hear them. I can sense them. He was offering me fame. He was offering me money. He was offering me power. He was offering me respect. He was offering me every high position and as he's keep as he's offering all these things i'll give you this i'll give you this i'll give you this i'm like nope 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 and every time i said no to those things i'd point to it the ring would turn red disappear the gold ring would turn red disappear gold ring turn red disappear and i'm saying nope 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 and all of a sudden he disappears from the tv and then there's this demonic woman. It looked like a, I don't even know what it was. And she had this thing on her forehead, but it wasn't like painted. It was like, it was lighting up. And she was so demonic and she's trying to talk to me and tell me. And then the people in the room are like putting their hands on me, trying to get me to stop talking. They're like, yo, just listen. I'm like, nope, nope. And I start talking about what Jesus did. I start talking about the power that Jesus has. I start talking about what God did and everything that God has done for me. And I'm telling this woman, I'm telling these people, and I'm telling Satan, he's offering me all these things, and I'm telling them all these things, what Jesus did for me, how Jesus is, what he is to me, what he means to me. He he overcame death. He did this, he conquered the grave. And I'm telling and they're getting mad. They are getting mad. And then all of a sudden I see Satan again. I see Satan again, but now it's like I'm out of the room. But I see Satan full manifestation as this dragon. And he's so mad, but I can still hear myself in the room saying, Jesus did this. He overcame by this. He conquered hell, death, and the grave because of this. And, th and I'm going off. And they they're still trying to keep me quiet. And they couldn't keep me quiet. And all of a sudden, as Satan is, is getting big like this huge dragon. And I said, and you know what defeated you? I said it was the blood. And as soon as I said the blood, I watched the blood of Jesus rain down. And when it rained down and it touched Satan, the whole screen that I seen on the television, everybody went quiet. The whole screen on the television turned completely white. 
I'm not even making this up. This is true. I put this on my life. I put this on everything. This is real. I seen the, the TV turn completely white. And at the bottom, it said 100. And it was in gold. And then the percentage, 100% gold. It was the blood of Jesus. And when I woke up in the morning, <laughs> I woke up and I went out the room. And I'm telling my wife, I said, I had a meeting with Satan. I had a meeting with Satan. Satan tried offering me everything. She said, be quiet. You're going to wake the kids. I says, I can't be quiet. And I says, and it was the blood. It was the blood. It was the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. I kept telling her, it's the blood. I'm on the couch and I'm thanking Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Father God, for, your, for, for sending Jesus. It was his blood that defeated Satan. It was his blood. It was his blood. Y'all understand? It was his blood. His blood defeated everything. It conquered hell, death, and the grave. It was his blood. His blood is righteous. His blood is pure. It's his blood that is holy. It is holy. He was the ultimate sacrifice. It's his blood. And when, I, when all that happened, Satan was gone. The same people who were in the room who were trying to conduct me into saying yes and agreeing with that. They stopped and they said, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you stood up to him. I can't believe they were so shocked that I stood up to Satan. They were so shocked that I said what I said. And I fell to my face in a dream and I was weeping. I was weeping. I was weeping bitter. My mouth was, uh, I was like, ah. I was just, I, it was my spirit, man. My soul was just crying out to the Lord, thanking the Lord in that same moment. It's because of his blood. I was thanking the blood of Jesus. I was thanking Jesus. I was thanking the Holy Ghost. I was thanking Father God. I was weeping and thanking them. And they were trying to get me up. But all I did was, all I could do was weep in the dream. And then when I came to and I sat on my couch, all I could do was cry. And I kept saying, thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. It's your blood. It's your blood, Lord Jesus. It's your blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's, there's power in the blood. There is power. There is healing. There is deliverance. There is freedom. There's salvation. There's everything you need in the blood of Jesus. There's everything that you ever need in the blood. I don't do this. I don't do what I do for me. I told the Lord when I was sitting on that couch, I told the Lord, I says, I told you. I told you, Lord, that I would I, I'll do anything. I'll do anything for you, Lord. I do everything for you, Lord. That deal, that didn't mean nothing to me. That was all, That was, I knew in my head, I said, that was all worldly, earthly things that was going to pass away. I'm looking towards the eternal. I want to spend eternity with Lord Jesus and in paradise with him. That's my heart. That's what I want to do. I want as many people who hear this message to give their lives to Christ, to surrender to Christ. I am just a, a vessel who's willing to help show people Christ. I want people to see Christ in me, but I want... You guys to know that it's a choice that y'all have to make. It's a path that you have to be on. A path that you want to walk. That, 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 that is a lonely walk. But Christ is with you so it's not really lonely. The world will have you feeling like you're lonely. The world will reject you. But you'll never be rejected by Christ. You'll never be rejected by Father God. Because he's right there with us all the time. He says I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he meant that. His words don't come back void. They don't come back void. They don't sit on deaf ears. When we pray, he hears our prayers. He answers our prayers. It's not in our timing, but he answers our prayers. Sometimes it is. But it all depends the situation. But it's for us to really put our faith and our trust in Lord Jesus. And in this dream, I told you, man, this dream was, it wasn't even, it was so real. I was at the meeting. I was at the meeting. I denied everything. The contract, I was laughing with my son in the car. I said, the contract didn't happen. I said, nah, I wasn't signing nothing. I wasn't giving nothing away because I know the truth. All this stuff is temporary. It's all temporary. I said to my son, if Satan offered you a million dollars, would you take it? No. If he offered you, let's just say you wanted to be a famous baseball player because my son loves baseball. And he offers you the position. I'll, I'll give you this. Would you take it? He said, no. I says, if Satan offered you everything that you ever desired, would you take it? He said, no. 
I said, that's a good answer. You know why? Because all this stuff is temporary. Everything that he offers you, the power, the respect, the money, the wealth, the women, the men, whatever you desire, the cars, the clothes, the jewelry, it's all temporary. It's all temporary. It's all going to fade away. It's all going to pass away. It's all going to pass away. But let me tell you something. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. Why we're all here is because of the blood of Jesus. Why you woke up this morning is because of the blood of Jesus. Why you're still breathing is because of the blood of Jesus. Why you have children and your children have children is because of the blood of Jesus. Why you still in your marriage and why you still have everything that you have, your house, your cars, your clothes, all that stuff. It might not be a lot, but it's because of the blood of Jesus. It's him. He's the reason why you have what you have. He's the reason is it's because of the Lord. It's because of the Lord. It's because he what he what he blessed you with. But you wouldn't have any of those things if it wasn't for the blood. I'm telling you, when you really think about it, it's the blood. That's why you have what you have. And the blood speaks better things of you. It speaks on behalf of you. It goes before God for you. So that's why you have what you have. That's why you, you you're able to wake up in the morning. That's why it's because of the blood. It's because it's speaking for you. It's inter it's interceding for you. It's the blood. But a lot of people can't even think. Like they don't even know. I was shown last night. I was shown last night how powerful the blood of Jesus is. I was shown. I'm not dramatic when I'm telling you. This is real. These are real emotions. This is real. I ain't I ain't faking the funk for nobody. You don't like me. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care. I'm not here for people to like. I'm here for you to love. Because God, Lord Jesus says to walk in love. So if you don't like me, then clearly you don't have the fruits of the spirit. And clearly you ain't listening to Lord Jesus. Because I'm not here for anybody to like. I'm here for you to love. That's why you're to love one another. Somebody needed to hear that. But back to the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. I'm telling y'all, it's the blood. I thank you, blood of Jesus, man. It's the blood of Jesus. It defeated Satan. Satan is mad right now. He's mad because I didn't sign that deal. I didn't listen to him. I didn't give him the opportunity. I didn't give him the time of day. Everything he offered me, I shut it down right away. I ain't playing. That stuff is nothing to me. I said, Lord, when I sat on that couch, I'm going to tell you all again. When I sat on that couch, I said to the Lord, I told you. I told you, Lord, I, I, I'll do anything for you. I told you, Lord, I surrender my will. I, I told you, Lord, I, I meant it. I said what I meant and I meant what I said. That's what I said. I said, I, I, whatever you need, Lord Jesus, I said, it's yours. My heart is yours. My soul is yours. My, my free will is yours, Lord God. Use me in any way that you want. I'm like completely, I'm, I'm sold out. Like I'm sold out for, for Lord Jesus. I'm sold out for Christ. I'm sold out for Father God. I'm sold out for the Holy Ghost. I'm sold out for the seven spirits and more of God. I'm sold out. Can't nobody, can't nothing. Can't, it's not going to happen. Yeah, Satan's going to come and try to throw opposition my way and temptation my way. But at the end of the day, I'm an overcomer. The old me is dead and gone. I was baptized on the 14th of this month, which was the Sabbath day. I was baptized. The old me is dead and gone. This is the new me in Christ Jesus. I am free. I am free from sin. I'm free from shame. I'm free from all that stuff. The oppression, the depression. I'm free from the lust. I'm free from the anger. I'm free from the abuse. I'm free from all that stuff. I'm free from it. It's because of Lord Jesus. I'm free. And you can be free too. But it comes with a cost. It comes with surrendering. That's the cost. It costs something. It costs something. This costs something. This walk costs something. It's not free. It costs something. It costs you putting yourself down, picking up your cross, and following Jesus. Lord Jesus. I pray that this blesses you, man. And when I tell you, man, it's the blood of Jesus.